Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech and continuing on from this series, uh, how to secure your Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Today, I wanted to talk about full node wallets. Uh, there are graphic user interfaces out there to type wallets that, that really give you like the full picture and it's very nice, clean aesthetics. Uh, but the full node wallets are going to be more of a toned down version. But first off, if you're an end user and you're trying to search for a wallet, nine times out of 10, you're going to go to Google and you're going to type in the cryptocurrency that you're looking at or that you want to store plus the word wallet but you're going to get a bunch of options for example if we search bitcoin wallet you can see up here we got some pay-per-click campaigns or ads trying to get us to go to those applications or parties the unfortunate thing about that is those are centralized uh you know single points of failure so if something happens to these firms or what have you then obviously you lose your funds we want to stay away from that um, and make sure that you control your funds now if we scroll down we do see the bitcoin wallet uh, remember, Bitcoin.org to me is the real Bitcoin, whereas Bitcoin.com is Bitcoin Cash. There's a different story for that that I mentioned in a previous video. But if we go on down to Bitcoin.org or just go straight to it on your browser, we can see some of the wallet options by going to resources and then over here clicking wallets. Uh, I'm going to skip the helper, but you could go through it if you want to, because I just want to get straight to the operating system that I have now desktop, Linux, Mac. OS um, and then of course Windows and we can see all the various ones there. I want Bitcoin Core uh, installed on my device. Now, just real quick, a full node wallet is going to download the entire blockchain to your system. If you do not have the adequate storage to hold the entire blockchain um, database, then it could take up a lot of space. So if you're a system that only has you know 230, 200 gigabytes of MVME SSD storage, this may not be best for you. An Electrum wallet would be best for you. But a full node wallet, you got everything synced up right there on your system. And you have full control over your keys, your coins um, using Bitcoin Core. So we're going to go ahead and download this right now for um, Windows. And I'm going to show you the application. So obviously we click download. It's going to download an EXE that you'll see here in the bottom left hand corner. That's probably going to take a minute. Um, and then it's also going to take even longer to sync that blockchain onto your computer. So just make sure you got enough space uh, on your system before installing the Bitcoin Core. Otherwise, if we go back here, uh, the Electrum wallet will do just fine as well. Still gives you full control. Uh, but you can see there's a couple of, if you compare this chart here, there's a couple of uh, differences between the Electrum wallet and then obviously the Bitcoin Core wallet. Okay. So it just depends on what you want. If you're a person with less space, maybe Bitcoin Core. Uh, would not work for you. Check out BitPay or Electrum or some of the other options that I mentioned in a previous video. But so our download is done. I click on the application to open it up. We're going to go through the setup process. Make sure you read where it's going, right? You could change the location right here if you have multiple hard drives. But you can see we got plenty of space. Now, this application doesn't take up much, but what's going to take up a lot of space is, again, syncing the entire blockchain to your device. So you may not see it here. It only says 54 megabytes out of uh, the 327 that I have available on my C drive, but the blockchain itself is going to be what uh, takes up the most space. So let's go ahead and install that Bitcoin Core, let that install, and then we're going to want to let that open up and go ahead and let it sync up. Bitcoin Core is going to pop up a secondary window, which you can see right here on your screen. And what you see is a directory in which I want to download or store the entire blockchain. I don't want to continue it or use it on my C drive. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a different drive, right? Give me a little bit more space there. Limit blockchain storage to two gigabytes, so on and so forth. Um, it would be sufficient to restore backup six days old. I could limit it. I'm not going to limit it. I'm just going to let it sync the entire chain which is 420 gigabytes now not all cryptocurrencies have such a large blockchain but a full node wallet as long as you practice um you know you, you practice safe practices as far as maintaining your computer you know you're not going into crazy sites or anything like that that will be the weakest link in that entire scenario is if you get hacked if your system gets compromised but if you have a full node wallet on a desktop or maybe a computer that you don't use on a day-to-day -day, but once in a while for to complete transactions a full node wallet on that device will probably be the most secure that you can do but 420 gigabytes is a lot of storage and you have to determine is that what you want to do otherwise again go check out the electrum wallet but we get to choose where we want to uh, store that blockchain i'm gonna go ahead and hit okay 
And then of course, this is what most of our wallets in the crypto space like Ravencoin, um, uh, Raptorium, a number of other coins will utilize a wallet that looks exactly like this or very similar to this, right? It's just plain Jane, uh, toned down. You can see that it's syncing the blockchain right here. We got, if I move this out of the way or hide it, um, we got our overview page, which obviously doesn't have anything because we got to create a wallet. We could do send, we could do receive, we could view our transactions. And I believe we can even change the theme of this particular wallet. Let's go look at options real quick. Display, interface, we could choose our language. We could choose the, but we can't change it to dark theme, unfortunately, or at least I'm not seeing that as an option here. Uh, some of these options you don't really need to play around with. I would just leave these alone or not even bother going to options. But most importantly is create a new wallet. Obviously, give it a name. Let's say test one just for this. We can encrypt the wallet with, you know, a key um, or a passphrase. But basically, you don't need any of these options, uh, but maybe encrypt wallet. So that way it's nice and safe. So we're going to go ahead and hit create. Here's the passphrase that we're going to talk about. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and call it uh, test one again. Uh, it, it's not going to have any funds in it, so it doesn't really matter. So there you go. Test one is this wallet's passphrase. Make it a lot longer than that. Don't make it password one, two, three. Don't make it something simple. Just make it something good uh, that you can remember. Hit OK. Uh, warning, if you encrypt your wallet and lose all your passphrase, you will lose all your Bitcoin. Are you sure you want to encrypt your wallet? Yes, but again, that's where the passphrase becomes very important. Now, there's two things when it comes to a full node wallet um, is... Because it's not like what I showed you on the mobile side of things where you get a 12 to 24 word C phrase, the full note is literally syncing on your device. There's two things. There's going to be the passphrase that encrypts your wallet, right? So you're going to need the password to unlock the wallet. But then there's also going to be a file that I'm going to show you here in just a moment. Let me go ahead and pull it up. All right. So that second window that popped up after the initial application is what I was talking about, where it's gonna store the blockchain. And in that folder is also your wallet files. What I urge you to do is back up that actual wallet file. And so to get to it, it's always gonna be the directory you chose, whether it's the C drive, D drive, whatever it is, users, or if you choose a different location, just remember where you put it, because that's very important. Um, in this case, by default, it's usually like C users, your username, app data, roaming and then the cryptocurrency right uh, if we go back to roaming what will happen is you're going to see a bunch of other cryptocurrencies in here i got big cash avian bitcoin interest which died out BitTube, so many other cryptocurrencies here but bitcoin or whatever wallet um coin or that you're using is obviously going to have an app data folder and in there you'll see wallets and there it is test one and so I really want to back up this folder somewhere and you can copy it. You can put it on a USB drive. You can put it on a secondary system just to keep it safe, just in case this system that we're on goes down. So backing this up and remembering your passphrase is something that's very important. If you store it on the same device that has an issue, gets hacked or compromised, you're going to be SOL. So always practice redundancy or redundant practices. Store it somewhere else, different device. If you write it down, obviously make sure you don't lose your notebook, notepad, whatever it may be. But this is very important. This is something that you want to practice uh, backing up every once in a while. Just make sure that your wallet there is backed up. Actually, once you back it up, you don't need to back it up again. But just make sure that it's backed up somewhere safe and don't forget your passphrase. But then it's just a matter of letting the wallet sync, which is going to take a long time because uh, 420 gigabytes of blockchain data is not small in the least. Um, Again, you're going to want to make sure you have enough storage for this on your system. But we're, we're going to be able to use, right? So if I go to receive, you can see I have no addresses in here. I could go ahead and give it a label. Again, we're going to use test one. I'm going to click create new receiving address. And boom, there's my receiving address. If you guys want to send some money there or some Bitcoin there, feel free. But I wouldn't recommend doing it because as well, it's going to be gone in a little bit uh, because somebody else is going to take advantage of this. But we could copy the address. Uh, we could save this QR code or image or somebody can scan it right now with their phone to uh, send funds to it, uh, which makes it very interesting and unique. And you can also save this QR code or image to share that with your friends and family, you know, have it right there on your phone. They can scan it, send you some Bitcoin um, if need be. So that makes it a little bit interesting, a little bit more uh, mobile, so to speak. Um, and then now we have the wallet here. We can always come back to it if we forget it right click copy address and then give that to whoever or use that to withdraw our funds too. 
Uh, we can see our transactions here on this tab. Obviously, there's nothing going on because this wallet is brand new. And then we can send some cryptocurrency by, you know, providing the address, right? We pop, pop in the address. Actually, let me go ahead and copy that address again. Would it not let me paste it myself? Yes, it does. So there it goes. Pay to that address. Test one. We can send the amount of Bitcoin and then we can subtract the fee amount from the Bitcoin we're going to send. We can use all available uh, balance by clicking this button right here. Use available balance. And then we can manage our address book. Like if we want to add an address, uh, excuse me, if we want to add an, uh, you know, somebody to our address book, we certainly can do that right here. We'll call them Chris and call that a day. Uh, already exists and is a receiving address, so we can't save that there. But maybe we can, you know, use a different address, use my friend's address or what have you, and save that in my address book because I constantly or more frequently transact with that particular address. So this isn't a full breakdown on a full node wallet, but I just wanted to show it to you. Full node wallets are going to require space on your device. Matter of fact, if we go back here um, and you say we're going around, we're looking, we're like, you know what? I love, really like Dogecoin. I like the Dogecoin community. You know, I want to get a Dogecoin wallet. Well, you go to CoinMarketCap or you just search Dogecoin wallet. It's going to lead you to official resources, which I urge you to always do. And if we go to wallets, Dogecoin fam have put a great little GUI or little interface here that makes it very simple. We got the Doge wallet and you can see that it's self custodial. We can import wallets. It also has a browser like type extension. You can see the various attributes of each wallet. Here's some hardware wallets, so on and so forth. But the core, right, just like Bitcoin core is going to want to store the blockchain on your device. So you're going to want to make sure that you have enough space. So we're going to go ahead and click download and then choose our operating system. They got it for Mac, Windows, and Linux. We're going to choose Win64. That's going to download just like you see here. And then we're going to do the same thing we did with Bitcoin. Bring that back on over. Minimize this. So here's the uh, basic EXE file that you're going to run and install this application. Hit next. We get to choose where we want to keep the program. I'm going to keep it on my C drive, but then I'm going to keep my blockchain or the blockchain storage on a separate drive that has a lot more space. We click next. Same thing. Run Dogecoin Core. It's going to pop up that same window. This is what a full node does. This is what most of them and all of them really are. They got that main installation of the application. Then you got to choose where you want to store the blockchain. Uh, itself and you can choose where to do that now if you wanted to store it on let's say d you know uh colon slash uh all my coins because you created a folder called all my coins you could certainly do that just don't forget where you put that and then make sure you back that up separately like i i talked about before where you would back up the wallet remember your seed phrase keep that on a separate device usb what have you uh, you can also click these three dots right here to go around and create a new directory if you wanted to. But we're just going to keep it on D, users, the computer's username, app data, roaming, Dogecoin. I know that makes it a little bit longer to, or harder to find, but it's just that simple. Full node wallets are secure, but they're only as secure as you and your habits and how, um, you know, if you practice good practices of securing, not clicking links, not opening things not going to silly websites or nefarious websites so it is a bit a good way for the average end user to control their funds manage their funds secure their funds but again everything in this world has inherent risk now look at the application does it look very similar does it look very similar it looks very similar doesn't it all right most of these wallets are going to be almost the same you're going to have your overview page you're going to have your send you're going to have your receive and you're going to have your transactions page. Obviously, we do not have a wallet yet. So if you don't see it popped up or prompting you to create a wallet, just click on much received. And then we can create a name. We're going to call this test doge instead. And then we're going to click request payment. And it's going to pop up with an address. And boom, there we go. Now we got our dogecoin address. We can go ahead and withdraw our funds from those decentralized exchanges that are failing us to a wallet that we have full control of and be safe and sound we can copy the address we can save the same image we can show it to friends people can scan the qr code send you money all that right here from your full node now the blockchain isn't as big from my understanding it might be as big uh 420 gigabytes as bitcoin uh but each blockchain is a little bit different some might take 100 gigabytes some might take 420 some might take uh you know only a few uh gigabytes a couple of gigabytes that's it so as long as you got the space to store or to have all the full node wallets for each of the cryptocurrencies, even if they offer it, 
because not all of them offer full node wallets for their cryptocurrencies. You just need to account for that storage space to sync the blockchain. Because what will happen if you're full is the blockchain won't sync all the way. And if you sent recent transactions and it was after a specific period, you won't be able to see that, right? You won't be able to complete that. You would still be able to send and receive, but then you would only track it through, you know, like the block explorer, not through the wallet. So just bear that in mind. But full node wallets are one of the easiest ways for the average end user like yourself to get involved securing their crypto without relying on any central authority. However, Electrum wallets don't have to sync the entire blockchain, could save you space, maybe a little bit quicker. And next time we'll talk about desktop GUIs like Exodus in the next video. So stay tuned for that. But on the way out, do me a favor, hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed, hit the notification bell to stay up to date, as well as check out links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And I'll catch you next one. Take care. Thank you.